is a midlife pop culture show for those of us who were born a few years ago. Let's show those millennials all the things we know. Being old makes us wise. Sometimes we even go outside. We know about life before 1999. You haven't seen nothing yet if you haven't lived life pre-internet. Listen up, this is stuff you won't want to forget. Midlife Pop Culture Show. Hello, hello everybody. This is Mr. G. Welcome to a packed Midlife Pop Culture Show. We're going to jump right into it. Welcome everybody. Here we go. We're going to play a new segment called Where's Luna? And here is a picture of Luna, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to show a picture of my dog, sort of like Where's Waldo, I think the name of the uh, book was. It's kind of on that. So here is the picture. Here's the first picture. My dog blends in pretty well. Here's our first picture of Luna. Beautiful. And we're going to play the Where's Luna song over the top of this. And call on in if you want to see if you know Where's Luna. Where is Luna? Where, where, where is Luna? Where is Luna? Where could she be? Where is Luna? Help me please find Luna. Where is Luna? Where is she? Give me a call. Help me find my darling. Where's my doggy? Where is she? Where is Luna? Where, where, where is Luna? Help me find Luna. Help me find Luna, please. Yes, this is Agnes from wow. the community. And as you know, the president of the Mr. G Fan Club. Mr. G, where you been? We haven't seen the other in a while. We had uh, me and Gildard are very concerned about wh uh, what's going on. I'm glad you're uh, on this. And I would like to play. I would like to play Where's Luna? And this new uh, portion of your show, I love it. We love pets here. So, Great. Uh, I believe yes. that Luna in this picture is on the upper left hand mm. corner. Um, and she uh, is very uh, well disguised. Thank except you. Except for the pink, the pink column, Mr. G. So, um, again, pleasure. I, I love playing this game. It's good to see you, Mr. G. And this is Agnes <laughs> and Gilda from the community, president of the Mr. G Fan Club. Congratulations, Agnes. Information to get on the Mr. G Fan Club. Please, mm. please send it to Midlife Pop Culture at Gmail. Thank you, Agnes. Always a very subtle, well-spoken, smooth voice of Agnes. Agnes, you are correct. We're going to give you that. Luna is in the middle of the left hand, but thank you very much for playing. Here's another picture. Let's play another round of Where's Luna? Let's play a little music in back of that. Where's Luna, baby? Where is Luna? Where, where, where is Luna? Where is Luna? Where could she be? Where is Luna? Help me. Find Luna. Where is Luna? Where is she? Give me a call. Help me find my darling. Where's my doggy? Where is she? Where is Luna? Where, where, where is Luna? Help me find Luna. Help me find Luna, please. We have a phone call. Hello. Ooh, Mr. G. Hi. This is Englishy. How you doing, you silver tongue devil? I'm, I'm Ooh, it's doing so well. Good Thank to you. Hear from you again. I just recently got my card from Agnes about the Mr. G fan club. Oh, and it made my day and now. Oh, Mr. G, I get to play the new segment, Where's Luna? Oh, okay. I believe in this picture, Luna is in the center. Mm. And what you see yes. are her two magnificent ears oh. pointing upwards. Oh, Mr. G. Mm -hmm. This is Agnes. Thank you, Agnes. Good day, Mr. G. And thank you for letting me play Where's Luna? Oh, and I just love the Where's Luna song. Oh, thank you. Ooh. Thank you. Uh, Agnes, it's good to hear from you, and you are correct. You can look right in the center there. Those are those terrier ears of hers. She's a mixed breed, this Luna. Terrier, Chihuahua, Minpin, I don't know, but there, here's her ears right there. Congratulations, Ag uh, congratulations uh, Englishy. Let's play again. Let's try another place. Okay, now, little music maestro. Where is Luna? Where, where, where is Luna? Mm. Where is Luna? 
Where could she be? I don't know. Where is Luna? Help me, please find Luna. Okay. Where is Luna? Where is she? Give me a call. Help me find my darling. Where's my doggy? Where is she? Where is Luna? Where, where, where is Luna? Help me find Luna. Help me find Luna, please. The phones are going crazy. Hi, Tom. Hello. This is Tom Tomilson. Hello, Tom. Proud recipient of a Mr. G membership card. Congratulations. And also the president for the citizens who can think logically ah. and not be fooled by shenanigans mm -hmm. being thrown at us yes. day in and day out. Oh, I agree. And Tom. not having any reasonable thought to back things up. I'm wow. sorry, Mr. G. Wow. I would like to play. <clears throat> if I would again apologize, mm -hmm. but I do get to carry it away. But this we game love the passion. Where's Luna is quite a great distraction and a great new segment Thank you. of your show. I believe Luna yes. is hidden mm. right in back of what appears to be her bed, right around the center of mm. the screen. Good eyes. She does blend in very, very well with the very dark, um, looks like comforter. Yes. And it looks like her bed. And boy, does she blend in well, <laughs> Mr. G. All right. <laughs> this is Tom Tomilson. Yes, Tom. Signing off. Tom, you are correct. Man, it's always a pleasure to hear your smooth intellectual voice. We are three for three on Where's Luna. Let's take a look at the next one. Oh boy, and oh my goodness, and Willie, I'm. Where is Luna? Where, where, where is Luna? Where is Luna? Where could she be? Where is Luna? Help me, please find Luna. Where is Luna? Where is she? Give me a call. Help me find my darling. Where's my doggy? Where is she? Where is Luna? Where, where, where is Luna? Help me find Luna. Uh, fuck me fine, Luna, please. Wow, uh, boy, t uh, Willie, right on the phone there. Thanks for waiting, Willie. Oh, wow. This is well-adjusted, Willie. Glad to have and you. Let me tell you, everybody, if you don't know, Mr. G changed my life. About two years ago when he started the show, they used to call me Wasted Willie. Yeah. Oh, whacked out, Willie. But yes. Mr. G, he talked to me. He encouraged me. And now I'm on the Midnight Pop Culture Show. I got me a job. I ain't no slob. Yeah, I'm okay. Woo! All right, Willie. Mr. G. Yes. I think mm -hmm. that way it is, Willie. Look, I even forgot my name. That's all I right. I think. I do that a lot. Hey, man, that Luna is hiding in what they call plain sight. Mm. I say plain sight. Right. Yes. Well, Justin Willie can see Luna. She's Mr. G's comfort dog, I know. All right. Mr. G. Yes. Peace, love, and mindful thoughts. Amen. This is Well Adjusted Willie saying, wow, I'll live for today. Well Adjusted, glad to hear you. Boy, I can't believe how popular this is. It looks like we got time for one more. Uh, where's Luna? Oh, boy. Little music, Istro. Where could she be? I don't know. Where is Luna? Help me, please find Luna. Where is Luna? Where is she? Give me a call. Help me find my darling. Where's my doggy? Where is she? Where is Luna? Where, where, where is Luna? Help me find Luna. Help me find Luna. Luna, please. Hi, Karen. Hideous. Disgusting. Disturbing. Oh, this is Karen. Yes. And I'm going to complain about how awful the Midnight Pop Culture Show is. Oh, come on. Me and my husband, Ken, who I will not allow to talk, huh? was just watching PBS, and by some nightmare, we ran across the Midnight Pop Culture Show. What kind well, of rigmarole, hey, 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 hey. roly poly, terrible show is this? Hang on now. Oh, my God. Can I watch PBS in peace? Sure. But no. The Midnight Pop Culture Show comes on. So as long as I'm here, I might as well play 
this ridiculous game con where hey, you, you don't have to play I if you don't want to. That once again, your photographer is just awful. The lighting is terrible, and I really feel sorry for that dog Luna because hey. it looks like she's sleeping on a cotton polyester blend. You can't go 100% cotton for your dog, or maybe a nice rayon blend of some wool. This hey, poor hey, dog, hey, hey, hey. I don't know what to do with him. Oh my goodness gracious, I feel so sorry for her. Anyways, oh, take I would just like to say that I think Luna is right on the left-hand part of that ridiculous couch that I see. Hey, and I now. also see that there's a lot of things that I don't like, such as the Midnight Pop Culture Show, The Sun, Rain, and my husband. But besides <laughs> that, my only one friend who I can't get a hold of thinks that I should calm down a little bit. But I don't think I can because this is Karen. Wow. Uh... Karen, oh, hi, hi, everybody. Uh, okay, uh, Karen was correct. We all have our beliefs. We all have our beliefs. Thank you for playing Where's Luna, and we'll be right back to the Midlife Pop Culture Show where we're going to go to the flea market. It's a Midlife Pop Culture Show for those of us who were born a few years ago. Let's show those millennials all the things we know. Being Welcome back to the Midlife Pop Culture wise. Show. Sometimes. Welcome back. Welcome back to the Midlife Pop Culture Show. What a jam-packed show we're having. No rest for the weary. No rest for the wicked. This is how it's done. We're having so much fun on the Midlife Pop Culture Show. Let's go to the flea market of about two, three weeks ago. And let's just watch this, ladies and gentlemen. Number 13. I swear to God that this lady was just warming her hands over the hot dog warmer where she was. Just amazing. Look at her, she's doing it right now. Look at, look at. She's doing it right now. Oh my God, that's crazy. I just saw that and I'm walking away. I can't freaking believe what I just saw. Okay, well. Uh, I will not say the name of the flea market, but it's in southern New Hampshire. Not a bad flea market. Guys, you got to be real careful when you go to a flea market. You go anywhere. You want to see who's handling your food. And right there, you saw a prime example of what probably happens all over the place. And you just got to be careful. You're going to end up in one of those green uh, porta potties regretting that you bought a hot dog from the girl who is not wearing gloves and not uh, caring a stone store, or maybe not even educated, on the proper way to handle food. So I went back there. Excuse me, I feel like I'm going to sneeze. So um, I went back two weeks later. <clears throat> I went back two weeks later. And uh, here's a candid shot of what I took. Okay, now what we see here, ladies and gentlemen, is uh, so many things wrong right here. Here is not, this isn't, the, this is where the, the girl from last, uh, from last uh, picture was two weeks ago. Now we have... A woman here with a propane tank to uh, an un, uh, in an un, the propane tank is not even fastened. That's number one. We got some Coke bottles and Coke cans sitting there in the day. We got an open trash can. We have electrical cords. Definitely not up to code. We don't have, and she's putting on some sort of egg sandwich. And you should be like that guy uh, up in that left-hand corner uh, walking away. Very, very dangerous. Next picture, please. Then I saw this. Here we have uh, bacon, eggs, cheese, all sitting out of temperature, not being stored uh, at any reasonable 32 to 40 degrees, as we know is the proper crack in eggs there. Eggs not. This is so much wrong with this. And, guys, I, I, was, I was shocked. And I just want to pass it on. Watch who's handling your food, or you're going to end up in the green porta potty. Okay, and maybe even worse. Next picture, please. This is what I saw next. Okay, here we have some crock pots. These are not institutional grade crock pots. They have no business being there. The outlet there is not up to grade or up to code. And then we have that scooper that probably has been sitting out there for two to three to four hours. And bacteria pretty much starts growing right away. And definitely after two hours of going in and out and in and out of that crock pot. OMG. Midlife Pop Culture Show here for you, showing you what to look out for when you're going to the flea market. Okay, next picture, please. Okay, here she is again. Now she's spraying some sort of flammable uh, nonstick spray onto her propane lit uh, burner or electric burner. 
Uh, probably not a great idea flammable wise. Uh, again, the cheese, this is about 15, 20 minutes later I came back and that cheese and eggs and everything still sitting out in a, what it was about 80 degree heat. Mm -mm -mm. Come and get it. Next one, please. Watch this. So that was a very short video. I wanted to get more of this. This is the guy who's handing hamburgers. And right there, you can see, stop right there. No gloves, no gloves, no gloves, no ice, no way, Jose. And then this guy sees me, and uh, he got nothing to hide. Listen to his voice. He says, who's this guy? You know who this guy is, man? This is a guy that is trying to help people and realize that there are certain food handling codes that must take place not taking chicken out of a bag with your hands then walking over to the buns with the woman in the pink tank top you're not supposed to wearing a tank top when you're handling food and of course we got no gloves what a gourmet feast of bacteria and salmonella and trigonosis ladies and gentlemen let's hear it for these guys all right yeah beautiful okay boy i'm a little riled up we're gonna take a quick break and we're gonna go to the spin doctors concert It's a midlife pop culture show for those of us who were born a few years ago. Let's show those millennials all the things we know. Being old makes us wise. Sometimes we even go outside. Here at a jam-packed midlife pop culture show. Jam-packed. Yes, yes, yes. We found Luna. We found out what's going on in food handling in some flea markets. Now we're going to take a deep collective breath. Mr. G went to the uh, Spin Doctors concert, a band from the, uh, I would say, uh, early 90s, perhaps. They had one super big album with four super big hits on it. They kind of went out of uh, sight for a while, and they're back now. Uh, and they played over in the Anheuser-Busch and, and Budweiser plant in Barrowback. Great setup, great stage. And um, let me talk to my producer for a second. Uh, Kyle, uh, could you name any Spin Doctor songs? Uh, I know of the... Uh, uh, I can't think of the way. I, I tell you that, you know, if you want to call me, babe, uh, just go ahead now. That's all I got. F that is one of their songs? Absolutely. Absolutely. They had four songs uh, uh, that um, they're really known for. Here's number one at the Flea. I mean, at the flea at the end, I of voice spin doctor's concert. Wow. Wow. Uh, that was called Two Princes, I think. Was that the song you were thinking of, Kyle? Yes. I think that was called I think that song's called Two Princes. I like to call it Little Miss Can't Do Wrong or It's a Whole Lot Evier. Uh since that female dog left town. Uh big nice nice opening line for a song though there, right? I mean really really grabs you. Let me tell you about the Budweiser plan here for a second. Um, fifteen minutes away from me in Merrimack. I was expecting a nice, uh, I don't know what to expect. I'd say it was, I don't know, half full. I'm guessing a 1,000 people there maybe. Uh, nice and wide open. Didn't feel squished. Met a couple of real interesting characters there, which is a lot of fun. Uh, nice people, nice people. I did see one, a uh, couple of millennials, if you would, or maybe people in their mid-20s kind of upset a uh, guy in front of them. And when the guy stood up who was a little bit upset, the guy was like 6'5", and boy, uh, bad move there, uh, uh, guy. Uh, 
Uh, the kid ended up getting getting kicked out. Uh, fight could have broke out. Uh, the guy the the guy that was uh, causing the ruckus came up to me and said, "I don't know what all the problem is." And I'm just like, "Hey, I'm just here to watch the spin doctors." Uh, but boy, uh, wow! So that was a little fun. Uh, but overall, the atmosphere there was beautiful. I had a an adult beverage, though the beverage did cost me ten dollars. It was very fresh. It was a large canister. Uh, uh, it was nice. It was nice. It was a nice, cool evening, too. No bugs. Um, this is really fun. You know, it was a fun time. And I got home to around 10.30, too, instead of driving all the way back. So, um, yeah, it was really fun. So, uh, here's another song that the Spin Doctors played. It's just early, early, early. What time is it? Early, early, early. What time is it? Huh, Kyle, you know that song? I did not. Now, this song was the... Very funky. You ever, you, you ever know, uh, Kyle, when you go to a concert and you, uh, you know, you do you ever listen to um, the band that you're going to go see? Uh, like either on a, you know, on the radio or on Spotify or whatever? Or do you ever, like, build up when you know you're going to a show to kind of reacquaint yourself? I with, did it last night. Oh, and what did you see last night? I saw a band called Motion City Soundtrack. And where was this? It was at the House of Blues in Boston. And how was it? Phenomenal. How was it getting in and out? Uh, it was a struggle because there was a Red Sox game going on. Yeah, boy, time. boy. See, that that really draws me away from going in. I guess you're younger than me, but I went to a Deep Purple concert a couple years ago at the Colonial. You familiar with the Colonial? Uh, right. in Laconia. Oh, no, the Colonial Theater in, uh, in Boston. Oh, I think there's a colonial in Laconia. Well, maybe it's not the colonial. Maybe it's, I don't know what it's called, but there's a theater in, Bo a very historic theater in Boston in the theater district. Uh, anyways, it was a horror show getting in and out of there. Horror show. Um, so you had a good time in Boston, though, last night? Great time. Fantastic. A lot of young people out there or people like uh, Mr. G? Yeah, there was more of the millennials that you, uh, you know, you mentioned in your theme song. I, I think the millennials are great. If it weren't for the millennials, uh, you know. We got people coming up behind them. Life is constant change, but boy, did I really enjoy going to uh, Merrimack versus going into Boston. And I so getting back to the question of uh, so you listened to this band? Did you know of them before you went to see them? Yes. What was the name of the band again? Motion City Soundtrack. I personally, as a uh, what am I? I don't even know what I am except to try to be a nice person. Am I a X generation, Y generation? Am I a baby boomer? I think baby boomer. Yeah, I think so. I don't know what the, you know. We went the over this. Generation and the baby boomers. I don't know what's in the middle. I, I know about Degeneration X, but we could. That's there a, that's a, WWE. that's a show for another time. But boy, yeah. Uh, so um, the show was really good. I recommend going there. Thirty dollars to get in, and I tried and tried to call up before see if they could do anything in the box office there if they're going to be opened. But I ended up spending thirty dollars for a ticket. I didn't think that was too bad. Uh, but then they hit me with like a seven dollars service charge. So it all ended up being like seventy dollars. I brought one of my friends who brought, recently brought me to another concert and just kind of pay back for that. We had a lot of fun. Um, but come to find out, guys, when you go there, there is a if you go there, there is a box office open, and you could have got in for twenty five dollars general admission. Just move right into the seats that weren't being used up because it wasn't sold out. So uh, you know, I, I feel like I. I uh, could have saved twenty five dollars, but I tried calling the the brewery. I tried calling. T nobody was there was no line anywhere to, to a phone line to get to ask if there is a ticket a ticket booth there, which was I thought was kind of weird. Sometimes you just gotta be safe. If you want to go to something, you might as well get the ticket that time. Well, now that I know there's a booth there, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, if I ever go there again, I'm gonna go there and just buy twenty five dollar no service charge ticket I'm in versus you know save myself twenty five bucks. But um, that's the midlife pop culture show, old people's concert advice of the day. Let's take a look at the last song. And since this, uh, this one came out uh, sideways, this is a uh, pocket full of kryptonite, I think they call this. A uh, great song, and I think it's kind of funny uh, or coincidental when I uploaded this song, which I had a hard time uploading a lot of this stuff from Google Drive to this drive to that drive. This one came out sideways, but I think it's a good way to end the show. A little sideways spin doctors for ya.
Ah, <laughs> uh, boy. Uh, that was the that song, I believe, was called Jimmy Olsen Blues. I may have screwed up some of these names of the songs. I think we got Jimmy Olsen Blues. Uh, for time is at 4.30. And then uh, the other song at the beginning. You know, you got four songs as a band. That's pretty big. That made for a nice thing. They did a couple other nice songs. I, some new stuff that I thought was really upbeat. And a little background information on the doesn't really matter, don't care. Uh, everyone who was original in that band, except for the bass player. The bass player has been out of the band for about a year, two years. He refused to get the COVID vaccine. And for, I guess, to get tested every day or before every show, he refused to get it. So they got another bass player. Uh, wow. So there's a little. Anyways, go out, do something, have some fun, be mindful, have mindful thoughts, have integrity, have a good time, have a good day. This is Mr. G and the Midlife Pop Culture Show, packed with information. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you again. It's a midlife pop culture show for those of us who were born a few years ago. Let's show those millennials all the things we know. Being old makes us wise. Sometimes we even go outside. We know about life before 1999. You haven't seen nothing yet if you haven't lived life pre-internet. Listen up, this is stuff you won't want to forget. Midlife. Pop Culture Show.